I've talked a lot about bipolar disorder and denial on this YouTube channel. I have several videos dedicated to it. But here's the thing. All of them talk about denial in relation to the person who has the illness. Well, what happens if a family member, a friend, or spouse is the one who's in denial? Maybe it's a parent who denies their child's diagnosis, or the spouse who believes it's all in your head. Could be the friend or boss who assumes that bipolar is just an excuse for unpredictable behavior. There are a lot of scenarios, and we're going to explore several of them today on Polar Warriors. This is going to be a two-part video to adequately cover the topic. The first video is going to explore parents who are in denial, while the second part covers friends, partners, and everything else. I'll even include some tips at the end of each video, so you might want to watch both parts. Without further delay, let's get started. From the moment parents find out that they are expecting a child, they start to fantasize about what the child's life will be like. It's overwhelmingly exciting to think of all the possibilities, especially once the child arrives. As the child starts to age, though, parents may notice that he or she is different from other kids, and their picture of the child's future can begin to shift. Dread may sink in when they realize those differences could be the symptoms of a mental illness of some kind. Their hopes and dreams come into question, and they worry that their child's life, as well as their own, will be harder. How much easier would it be to just pretend there isn't a problem, to just look past it and wait for the child to, quote, outgrow the behavior? Another challenge is when both parents have untreated mental illnesses themselves. If they are in denial or lacking insight, there's less chance that they will recognize the same behavior in their children. They can also be so consumed by their own struggles that they don't have the ability to offer the support their children need. The chances of a child having bipolar disorder if both parents have it is anywhere from 50 to 75 percent. This has put a lot of families in a difficult position. Also, if the kids mirror their parents' denial of the illness, it decreases the chances that they will ever seek any real help. After all, can one drowning person save another? There's a lot of speculation when it comes to the number of kids being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Some parents feel that the diagnosis is being handed out indiscriminately to any moody child. Studies show it's actually the opposite. Up to 40% of people are misdiagnosed with depression, anxiety, or ADHD when they do in fact have bipolar disorder. The combination of speculation and stigma keeps some parents in denial. There's also shame, like when parents believe that they would be failures if they admit their child has a mental illness. Shame actually does a lot of damage. Children unconsciously internalize the shame, which makes them deny their illness in order to avoid embarrassing their parents. The child ends up a glorified caretaker to the parents' fragile egos, and this makes it so much harder to treat the illness later on. I made a video a while back that talks about living in the shadow of another family member's mental illness. Let's say your brother has untreated bipolar disorder and a substance abuse problem. This is called dual diagnosis. Your brother's behavior is so severe that it dominates your parents' attention. It sets the bar for what it means to be, quote, mentally ill in the family. It makes it easy for parents to deny your bipolar symptoms because they aren't as severe as your brother's. They may even assume that you're just copying your brother's behavior or seeking attention. Fear of being medicated or overmedicated is another issue parents can face in recognizing bipolar disorder. Some parents believe meds will change their child negatively somehow, or that it's all a big pharma conspiracy. In cases where meds are needed, the majority of doctors who treat children don't medicate until it's absolutely necessary. If a child is a danger to themselves or others, it could be a matter of life and death. It's important to not let personal fears deny a child's quality of life. Moving on. Another fear parents have is that a bipolar diagnosis will ruin the child's life. 
that it's like a permanent stamp on their forehead stating that they are mentally ill. Parents worry that it will follow their child around for the rest of their life. Here's a very important consideration. If a child isn't properly diagnosed, they could be pegged as a problem child and not receive the help necessary from the school system. Educators are legally required to provide accommodations if the child has an official diagnosis. They can tailor an individualized education plan, or IEP, that suits the student's needs. Without a proper diagnosis, a student can be at the mercy of a system that doesn't understand how IEP modifications can benefit both the child and the classroom. One in 10 young people experience mental health issues. This equates to around three in every classroom. By identifying the problem and providing suitable instruction, we can alleviate so many of the struggles a child with bipolar disorder faces. The last thing I want to mention about parents in denial is that it breaks trust between the parent and their child. If my leg were broken and my parents tried to convince me that it was all in my head, I'd have a harder time trusting their judgment, especially if I knew something was clearly wrong. The fact that bipolar disorder is an invisible illness complicates the situation. Unhelpful suggestions or minimizing feelings can result in a child feeling lonely and isolated. This shuts down the line of communication. The less the child talks about the problem, the more it can reinforce the parent's denial. Out of sight, out of mind. I think I've covered parents in denial enough to make some good points. If there's something I missed, please join the conversation in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts, experiences, or any tips you may have for the community. Speaking of tips, I'd like to share a few with you before we conclude part one of this series. Please, please remember to keep realistic expectations. Depending on the level of denial, some parents may never be open to having a constructive conversation about mental health. I wish I could tell you exactly what to do in this situation, but it's complicated, as many of you know. My first tip is to talk about the symptoms instead of focusing on the specific condition. We have to face the reality that bipolar is still very stigmatized. Some parents will put up a wall when they hear it mentioned. However, depression, anxiety, sleepless nights, and anger are examples of things that most people can relate to. If you can, try to relate the symptoms to a specific behavior. For example, you could say, I know I haven't been taking showers as much and it's because of my depression, or I'm having a hard time staying focused because I'm not sleeping. It makes it harder to deny symptoms when there's a real-world example of how it's impacting your life. My second tip is to explain the severity of the situation and encourage them to at least rule out the possibility. You might mention that bipolar can reduce life expectancy by over a decade if left untreated, or that one in five people with bipolar take their own life. It's also progressive, where it can get worse as we age, especially without treatment. You could say something like, I've been struggling with some very intense depression, sleep issues, and my quality of life is being impacted by it. I'd like to rule out the possibility of it being related to my mental health and could really use your support. If they don't respond well to this, you might have to move on to my third tip, which is, to advocate for yourself and seek help outside of the family. Call your local behavioral health department and ask them about resources in your area. Some clinics offer sliding scales or even free services. It just depends on where you live. Peer support is also huge. Look into online support groups, forums, or communities dedicated to bipolar disorder. If you want to join my own private community, there's a link in the video description. All that said, don't be afraid to advocate for yourself and seek outside help. I hope something I said resonated with you today. This isn't an easy topic to cover just because of how complex it is. If the topic interests you so far, I think you'll find part two to be very informative. I'm going to discuss several more scenarios where denial and bipolar disorder coexist. 
Take extra good care of yourselves, and I'll be back here soon with part two of this video series. Stay well. Thank you.